There are times when you deserve more than a coffee break. So make a cup of Mellow Birds. You'll find its smooth, mellow flavor turns an ordinary coffee break into a mellow moment. Mellow Birds for Mellow Moments. Every day should have some. Ah, Mellow Birds. Hmm. Mm. Beautiful morning here today. Sun is coming up. Possibly I'll have a cigar in a little bit. But I'm enjoying my hug in a mug. You should uh, take a drink of whatever you're drinking right now. I prefer mellow birds. You might prefer another coffee or, like I said, a Horlicks. Maybe a cold drink. <laughs> Maybe you don't need a drink at all. Let's see what's on the box today. The Wesley branches will soon be bare of leaves, but even at this time of year, Bertie Doe has some tasty vegetables to deal with. Now November is here, it is time we stored our near hardy vegetables, such as winter radish. Come on, admit it. Admit it, guys. This is amazing, isn't it? And Swedes. But we'll start with winter radish. This particular variety is black Spanish. It's a very nice mild flavour and you store them pretty much similar to what we store beetroot and carrots. Just nip them off there. Instead of screwing them off we cut them off and we have them there and put a bit of sand over the top and store them in a nice airy shed. It doesn't have to be completely frost free because these vegetables are, are near hardy and just about an inch of sand on the top like that. Then we go to Swede. There's no tool needed to dig them up. You just get hold of the neck and pull, and it comes up quite easily. Now these Swedes will, when we cut them, will heal over, unlike a lot of other vegetables. That will heal over, and so will the root end like that. Hmm. And there, don't mind a bit of Swede. Swede is an, you know, I'd, uh, typically I'd probably have a mash, mashed Swede. Um, I think I prefer it mashed. Uh, turnip, I, I would say I've had less regularly in life. Um, in fact, I can't remember the last time I had a turnip. Um, but, uh, yeah, the mashed swede was in my mother's regular rotation when I was growing up. So, you know, love a root vegetable. And I like an old man in a cardigan doing gardening. Oh, it's amazing. This is a mellow moment. We store them in sand, pretty similar to the way we've just done the, the radish. A little bit of sand over the top, like that. For the Zoomers watching, these are vegetables. These are things that grow in the ground and sometimes people eat them. Okay. Back in the days before Kentucky Fried Chicken, people ate vegetables like this. And there again, these will stand quite a few degrees of frost in a shed or some other building. All that we need to do is keep them really dry. But they will stand five or six degrees or up to ten degrees of frost. Dave Hutchins planted shrubs in the shadiest part of our garden two months ago. Now he needs to put in smaller woodland plants to cover the ground between them. Since our last visit here, you can see that the plants which we put in have made some growth. The autumn colour has really begun to show on this 
deciduous azalea over here. By the way, I believe this is in uh, Wisley Gardens, which is just a little bit down the road from here. I take AAA there regularly. One of my favorite things in life at the moment is the changing of the seasons and feeling those changes of the seasons at Wisley Gardens, um, you know, with my little one. Sometimes uh, me and Mrs. AA go together uh, with AAA. It's nice. She, when she was younger, she loved going around the uh, the mazes there, and she'd go water fountain, water fountain. She's a little bit older now, so has got uh, you know she's four now, so has different uh, different priorities. In fact, one of the more irritating things she used to do is you see that little little sign there. She used to like to go and pick those out of the ground. And I'd have to be like, no, you're not allowed to touch those. And I have to, you know, I had to put them back. Um, these days, she's a bit, little bit easier. You know, she just has different, uh, you know, she wants to play and run around and things like that. So um, anyway, yeah, Wisley Gardens, you should pay a visit if you're ever in this neck of the woods. The rhododendrons are well budded up. We've lost the attractive red young growth on the Pyrrhus at the back, but that again will come in the spring. Since that time, we've begun to put in some of the ground cover plants, which I mentioned. We've put Pachysandra terminalis in here. You'll see that this particular one has got a nice variegated edge to the leaf, and later on will give us a flower. It'll also give us a complete smother of the ground. Further back, we've got Reconopsis betanisifolia, which is the blue Himalayan poppy. This is not always the easiest of plants to grow, but is well worth the effort if you possibly can. In this area, we've got pulmonaria. This, we've got, we've put a little further towards the front because the white marking on the leaf, we would tend to lose if the shade was too dense. Further towards the front of the border, there's a little more light so that we will maintain the color there. And later on, the flowers will come in the spring as well. But now we've got to the point, I'll just show you how to put in a few more plants which will give us some ground cover. This is Lily of the Valley, and most of you will know this and appreciate the fact that it's got a very nice scent. One thing you will notice with this is that there's two different sorts of buds on it. We've got the very much fatter ones like this one, which are going to flower next year, and these are thinner, which will next year only produce growth, but the following year will give us some flowers. These you buy in a, a dried off dormant state, but most of the roots are still alive and as soon as you plant, will come away. Well, we'll plant one of the roots which has got a nice fat bud. And the easiest way of doing this, rather than fiddling with the trowel, is just to scrape a shallow depression with your hand, lay it in, spread out the roots a little bit, and then just cover it back with soil. And you'll see that the bud is just below the surface, just poking through. One of the tricks to split difficult plants is to use two forks, back to back, to prise the clump apart. You can do it with your fingers, but the forks do a better job. Before the clumps are planted, any leaves that are damaged or diseased should be peeled away. Mm. This variety is related to the common primrose. Like the wild sort, it likes a moderately shaded position with a rich but loose type of soil. Dave Hutchins is planting the roots three or four inches deep. Woodland primulas do well in moderate shade, but trilliums thrive even in the gloomiest corner. Now we're going to plant these trilliums in the, the back side of the garden against the wall where there's very much more shade because trilliums do not like very much sunlight. You, the thing to remember about planting trilliums is, is, the, is the depth at which you plant them. You don't plant them quite as shallowly as you would an iris where the rhizome is virtually on the surface soil. You put them in a bit more, but you don't cover up the buds. So I'll just show you the depth to plant. Make a, a shallow hole, a little deeper than we did with the... Oh, as much as I'm enjoying this, I should tell you that um, I never do any gardening myself. I'm not a gardener. Don't have green fingers. Um, 
Mrs. A.A. more into gardening, but not me. Lily of the Valley. Make sure that the, the roots are all in there and fairly well spread out. And then just put the soil back over them. Just firm them in lightly. And as you can see, the rhizome is covered, but the actual buds themselves are still showing. This conifer hedge was planted in early summer. The Cupressus macrocarpa gold cone has grown well. Sid Love is going to try a deciduous hedge at the other side of the garden. The preparation for this hornbeam that we're planting now is exactly the same. Take out a good trench, get your manure well down into the bottom of the trench because it's going to be here many years, don't forget. But the reason that we're planting hornbeams at this time of the year and not in June is because they're bare root. You see, I have these laid in here, and there we are. That's, a, that's an excellent plant, you see. And it's a good five feet high at the moment, so it will soon mature into a good hedge. Now, I'm putting these two feet apart, and, and it's very difficult to have a garden line for this type of thing because you need to move so much soil. So I get my little t cane, mark the two feet, I just make the mark there, and then put my plant in. Now, here again, of course, this is a, a two-handed job, really. So you must dig your wife out from the kitchen or by the television and uh, get her to come and give you a hand. And keep shaking the plant. <laughs> Base low level misogyny. To allow this soil to go in around the roots, although the soil is absolutely perfect. Wouldn't, no, one wouldn't think it's November. Now then, this is where you put the boot in. Don't be afraid of it. Get it in nice and firm. Now, the, in a, about three years' time, this will be an excellent hedge. I won't do anything to it now in the way of trimming, not until next spring. Let the weather decide what it's going to do before I um, do any pruning to it. And uh, get some more strength into it. And there you are. Good luck with your hornbeam hedge. They make an excellent barrier, I can assure you. Mm. Reg Perriman is getting down to his digging again. For many jobs in the garden, the earlier the preparation, the better the results. And in this case, harsh winters are even an advantage. We first of all take out a trench, which is two foot wide, and we take out the soil to a spade's depth. That's roughly one foot. Uh, to clean out the crumb out of the bottom and put the soil on either side. Mm. And if you do this, and it's left there during the winter time, you'll find that the frost will get right through these ridges and help to break down all this soil so that when we fill this back in again around about february time we should have a good depth of nice fine I should let you know ladies and gentlemen that i've actually finished my mellow birds for today it took me 13 minutes i've been you know as i've been doing the show be, started to become more interested in exactly how long it takes me to drink a cup of coffee and it really depends um i would say that the quickest time is probably about 12 minutes and the longest time is going into 16 17 minutes but it's usually in and around there and that is why this show is always between 10 and 20 minutes long well anyway i hope you enjoyed your mellow moment for today Join me tomorrow morning for another one. <laughs> Have a mellow day, everybody. There are times when you deserve more than a coffee break. So make a cup of Mellow Birds. You'll find its smooth, mellow flavor turns an ordinary coffee break into a mellow moment. Mellow birds for mellow moments. Every day should have some.